Okay, we are back to our study about the Bible. And the whole entire study now we pick up from the Bible. Last time we did the Greek and anti-Semitism. Now we pick into the meat. The Bible and how and where we got it. And the perverted Bible and the scholars. And right now we're going to look at right now the character of this study. And people will say, well, that's just like any other book. Men wrote that like any other book. You realize the outburst when the adversary, the devil, has made to counterattack this Bible and interfere with secular attention. Who does not even know anything about the Bible, never mind Christians, is substandard than, oh, it's just a book. It's a, just a book. Because they never read it. They didn't read it with the Holy Spirit. They didn't study it. They don't live it. To them, the Bible is an enemy. And it's not just one more book to them. It's inferior than that. They have a self-assurance. It's a book of myths and fables that do not approve with or contradicts their routine. They do not want anything to do with it. They are in attack mode. I remember one time I was with my son where we went door knocking and come up to this house. I, I remember vividly. I remember it was in Ledger. We walk up to this house and there were no trees or anything. It was a brand new house. Just put in. As we walk up to the door, we could hear people scrambling around. We could hear them running up the stairs and running in doors and opening and closing. And my son asked me, he goes, Dad, what's going on? I said, they see that we have the Bible and they don't want the Bible. It's an attack. The devil is out to end your confidence in the Bible. And for the world, they have no confidence at all. So the devil wants to destroy that. But for you that carry the Bible and believe the Bible, the devil wants to try to use the world to destroy your confidence. And the devil started in the Garden of Eden when it came to man. Yea, as God said. The first words of the devil to man the first words of the devil is in Isaiah, but the first words of the devil say in the man was, Yea, as God said. Reliability is extremely vital. How reliable is our Bible? How trustworthy is it? First, we got to know how precise its accounts are. We cannot have dependability without accuracy. You know, all the prophecies, first and second advent, have to be 100% fulfilled. And if they're not fulfilled yet, that will be fulfilled. That's accuracy. Secondly, we have to know how confident its message is. Why do I have to listen to it? And today, it's merely, you know, my favorite preacher, oh, my pastor, oh, what about the Bible? Oh, well, we got a good church. What about the Bible? Oh, well, you got to come hear my preacher. You got to come hear this evangelist. You got to hear this guest me. What about the Bible? Why should you and I outline our entire life on the Bible? Why should you have faith in the Bible to lead you in all that you do and all that you say until Jesus comes again? And then when Jesus comes again, we got to rely on that reliability and accuracy that he is coming. Why should I guide my entire life? What I say, what I'm going to do. It comes to one matter of accuracy. 
The Bible says that one day we're going to be judged as Christians. The world be judged as sinners. And the other matter is authority. God is the judge. And that if we do not obey what God tells us to do, that we do not do what the Bible tells us what to do, we're going to be at fault. We're going to be at a loss. And the accuracy of the Bible is the accuracy of my life. And the authority of the Bible is the authority of the one that will judge us. So how accurate are its statements, the Bible? Behind the matter of accuracy is the accuracy of Jesus Christ himself. He's either saying the truth or he's not. Think about that. Either Jesus Christ is, is the true and he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, or he's lying. And in Matthew 5.18, the Bible says, and the words of Jesus. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass one jot, one tittle shall no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. That is a robust declaration of dealing with the accuracy of the Bible. There's no if and or but the whole lot that it predicts will be fulfilled <coughs> Jesus said in Matthew 5 18 all prophecy everything that the Bible said it will happen will happen and not one jot or one tittle will pass away until it does That is an accurate, accuracy statement by our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's to depend on the Bible doing what it says it will do. There is no accuracy of any evolution textbook. And no evolution textbook being taught in all the education schools has no prophecy it has no facts and there are facts they've been distorted jot of matthew 5 18 is the smallest letter of the hebrew language it's the smallest of the 22 letters in the hebrew language and jesus would say not one letter but the very smallest letter. We would say for the English language, we would dot every I and cross every T. Everything, we're not going to dot every I and cross every T until it's all complete. we got to understand the inspiration, inerrancy, that it is a little deeper than the average evangelistic church believe the bible is more than what your church and you may have a good church and i doubt it in the laodicean church age but do you realize there are information knowledge wisdom and understanding that are in the 66 books of the king james bible that not even pastors preachers evangelists missionaries men of god no one has yet to find what the true answers are yet, that God has not revealed to us some information. I mean, we do not know. Only the Father knows the date of the rapture and the time. Revelation 19, 9. And, he's, and he says unto me, Right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Moreover, it is true again, or it is not true. 
And the Bible and Jesus makes the accurate statement is, it is true. The Bible records to us about, G about God, who is Jesus. He's unable, he cannot, will not ever lie to us. Now, we've got to trust that accuracy. We got to trust those three statements that God cannot lie because we got to realize we have an adversary, the devil, the Satan, running around. And John 8 44 says he is the father of lies. And he will try to deceive us. And we have two beings of higher. I don't know what word, but almighty God who cannot and will not lie. And we have the unholy Satan, the devil, who is all lies. So there has to be from God a book that contains no lies. And yet in the world, there is a realm of lies produced by the devil, the enemy. The Bible says that obviously, the Bible says beyond, there is no other statement what God has said is accurately reported. Our God is making a truthful statement and our God is accurate and has to be depended upon he's never going to mislead us and he's never going to lie to us that is the statement of the bible that is the facts of the bible we're going to have to get the accuracy we're going to have to get the authority set forth when we look at the bible take any book you want to take outside the Bible or even modern Bible are they accurate that the story has not been stretched to make the author or the characters a little more or a little less well there are lies in the Bible and surely, every time Satan speaks, it's a commonly known thing that the devil lies. The devil will tell some truth, and then the, the devil will leave out, he'll omit, he'll add, he'll uh, subtract, or just outright lie. Men are documented, and they speak falsehoods or lies. But inspiration does not denote to whether there is a lie in the Bible. Though we will record Moses, though we will record Rahab the harlot saying to her, the men of Jericho, I don't, I did not know those men. I've not seen those men. I don't know where those, that, that was a lie. And the Bible recording to us the words of, of, of Rahab. Yes, Rahab lied. But the Bible did not lie to us telling us when Rahab lied. And there are times that Moses and David and Peter lied. And yet the Bible does not lie to us. When they lie to record what they said, it does not lie to us when it says, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. But there are textbooks out there that will lie to say, uh, in the beginning, the Big Bang. There are lies in the Book of Mormon of people in places that archaeology can never find. There are lies in a Catholic and Protestant catechism to back up and teach to traditions. There are lies in the Quran. 
There are lies of Muslimism where Genesis 22, the Muslims say Abraham and Ishmael went up into the mountain, replacing with Isaac. That's a lie. God recorded it was Abraham and Isaac that went up that mountain. So there are lies recorded in the Bible, but the Bible does not lie. Inspiration states to whether its accuracy testified as it was told. You can take your King James 1611 Bible into a courtroom, and the courtroom will have to find the testimony of the King James 1611 Bible truth and without fault. And if they do find fault, God, the judge of all the earth, will find his word faultless. And as we read in Revelation 19, saying these true sayings of God. So whatever man says of the Bible, God said, these sayings are of God. They are not just saying, they are true saying. Each and every time God speaks, it is the truth. It is all accurately reported. It means true, genuine, totally dependable, relying, reliable sayings of God. This man raped his sister. And this is the story, putting no good light on him, putting no bad light on him, putting no good light on her, putting no bad light on her. This is a king that stayed home from battle, and this is the true and accurate report, and no favor of David, and no favor of Bathsheba, telling us from the truth, the accuracy of David's adulterous and murderous affair which would become his wife. We see the accuracy and the genuine dependability of a man that went into Egypt and said, she's my sister. We are genuine of dependability of Peter saying three times, I don't know him, I don't know him, I'm a blank and you blank blank don't know him. And then the rooster or the cock crew at the third time. We are accurately proclaimed before us that the devil and Jesus were together and he was tempted three times accurately. Even though the devil added, subtracted, and he twisted the word of God, Jesus totally, genuine, dependably, God. And everything recorded in the temptations of Jesus was accurate. It did not favor Jesus, and it did not favor the devil, and it did not unclean Jesus and it did not unclean the devil it reported it to and as it was when we talk about Mary the mother of Jesus it accurately put her who and what she was <coughs> the Bible did not put Mary on a pedestal with the gods at the Catholic Church and the Bible proclaims about Mary, yes, she was a virgin. But after Jesus was born, that her and her husband Joseph came together and there were other children. Mary was a remarkable woman. I admit to that fact that God was able to choose her as the vessel of the body of Jesus Christ in the womb. I'll give Mary that much credit, but the Bible doesn't shed less light. The Bible doesn't shed more light 
what it accurately tells us about Mary, that the fact is, Mary had to go into the temple and offer, according to Levit Leviticus 12, the sin offering of having a male child. Where the church, the Catholic church, Mary was without sin. That's a lie. The Bible accurately records to us that Elizabeth and Sarah, two women, old age, carried a baby in their womb and gave birth. Revelation 21, 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and I can't wait for that day. And he said unto me, Write. This is the one that's on the throne. For these words are true and faithful. Well, how do I know that man correctly testified to that? What if, what if, you know, John just was writing his own little thing? Like all the philosophers, like all the, the, the authors and all the men writers. Revelation 22, 6. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God, the holy prophet, sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. That's how we know. And I'm not going to take, I'm not going to rush through this. This study is going to be long. We've got 116 pages. And I think we're going to stop there as, in, as the introduction. We got next the re reliability of the Bible. But let's stop right there. I think it's a good stopping point. Let's stop at, let's call it the, the Bible. Accuracy and authority. And Lord willing, we're going to try every Wednesday to come and teach the Word of God. The Word of God. You are allowed, this is uncopyrighted information, you are allowed to share this. You are allowed to download it. You are allowed to put it on CDs, cassette tapes, whatever. Whatever it is to get this study out, You are. I give you free permission to go out and get this word out. Now, if you distort, you lie, you tamper, you cut, you make me say things I did not say, that is between you and God. we're going to try to set forth every week, Lord willing, this study of our Bible. You can, at our website, and it will be with the, the audio of, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, YouTube and SoundCloud and my Facebook post. You'll be able to access our, the Hayward Family Ministry website. And this is, this tab is called the Bible. We also have a tab or web page called Download. And you can go to the download page and there are many things to download. And you can download this Word document of this study. And that also is free of charge. So I think this would be a great time to stop right now. I don't think we need to go any further. I think we got enough meat on our plate right now. Let's sit back, lean back, and let's digest. The accuracy and authority of our Bible.